so the topic is derivative market uh, <coughs> this is a topic which is included in the syllabus of uh, mcom kerala university uh, derivatives and risk management so almost uh, all portions uh, i can try to cover uh, in different videos so this is the first video which shows concepts uh, explanations of uh, explanation of derivatives so the derivative market we can start from the slides So the contents uh, which covers the introduction of derivatives, introduction to futures and options and swaps, is the application of futures and options, uh, trading, clearing and settlement and accounting of uh, accounting and derivatives. So the concept of derivatives, derivative is a product whose value is derived from the value of some something else, underlying assets. So derivative is a financial engineering product, it is a product of finance and this product value the product value depends on the value of the underlying assets so derivative is a transaction which is uh, which is doing with the help of some other physical asset like bonds shares debentures golds etc so these kind of debentures bonds shares gold their prices is a determining factor of determination of the price of derivatives so we are doing derivative transactions with the help of these kind of underlying assets like shares, debentures, bonds, gold, etc. So why derivative? So this is a wonderful uh, financial engineering device or service which is possible to transfer price risk by locking in asset prices. Suppose we are a foreign exchange, uh, we are doing with uh, uh, multinational companies so a lot of foreign exchange transactions have been taken place so we need to avoid the risk so we can do with the help of derivatives or we need to avoid the uh, risk of price fluctuation in particular share we can do derivative transactions so derivatives minimize the impact of fluctuations that's a very crucial point of uh, derivative in fact of driving the growth of derivatives uh, increased volatility in asset prices in financial market you know the market is widely fluctuated so that derivatives is a weapon is a weapon to solve uh, the crisis increased integration of national financial market within the national market you know the, the coupling effect of national and international market so uh, this coupling effect will lead uh, for uh, more usage of derivatives so, Marked improvement in communication facilities and sharp decline in that cost. See, the communication is very well improved, and the NSE, BSE also they are all using supercomputers for trading. The trading will not be stopped in any time and anywhere. The development of more sophisticated risk management tools, innovations, and lot of innovations which has been. Uh, it has been done in derivative market. So these are the types of derivative product, the forward futures, options and swaps. These are the four main derivative product and the options again categorized as put option, call option, warrants, leaps and basket. And swaps mainly categorized as interest rate swaps and currency swaps. So this is a major uh, derivative forward forward is a customized contract that means the, the two parties ended in the contract by sitting uh, sitting uh, in the opposite direction and the contract are customized the parties can have the freedom to make the contract the number of the contract size of the contract the price of the contract all these particulars are determined by the parties no other external regulators the future is different Futures uh, agreement between two parties to buy or sell a certain quantity of an asset at a certain time in the future at a certain price, but there is a presence of exchange and presence of regulator is there. And, uh, these options, options, call options, put options, leaps, warrants, and basket. Uh, so this I will explain later. And swaps also is a private agreement over the counter transactions. Uh, this slide also explained in later. Then participants in the derivative market is very important. The participants 
are hedgers, speculators, and arbitrators. Hedgers, uh, hedgers, you know, hedging. They are hedging the risk. If we expecting some kind of risk, if we feel that, if we emotionally feel that some kind of risk we need to face, so that time we can do derivatives to avoid the expected risk. Speculators, they can make profit out of the direction of the market or trends of the market. They are short term traders. And the arbitrator, they take positions in the two market difference and they may make a profit. And uh, th this is very important. Derivative market categorized into two exchange traded derivative market and over the counter derivative market. Exchange traded uh, derivative market uh, means derivatives in stock exchanges like NSE and BSE. So, uh, derivative trading have been taken place in this stock exchanges and over the counter exchange means or not over the counter exchange is over the counter trading so some kind of derivatives are not permitted in exchanges so they are trading like forwards swaps or these transactions are carrying out in over the counter way that means in a bank uh, or uh, in a private place over the counter features of otc derivative market is over the counter market it's a private agreement it's a customized contract but there is a credit risk. You know, there is no regulators, there is no agreement, there is no margin. So, always credit risk. One of the party may violate the contract. So, that credit risk is a part and parcel of the OTC market. There are no formal centralized uh, limits, it means quantity of transaction is not determined so that the people can do any size, any size of contract. And no margin, no formal rules for risk and uh, barred and sharing, no formal rules for risk. No formal rules and mechanism for ensuring market stability is a major, major problem. OTC contract is generally not regulated by regulatory authorities. Okay. So problems of OTC market so that the people are more interested in exchange traded derivatives is very risk free and uh, uh, this is uh, so that Derivative trading is much uh, more uh, happened in uh, exchanges rather than OTC market. So NSE is a, one of the major uh, stock exchange in the in the world, also in in the country for dealing with derivatives. So they have three months expiration cycle. Three contracts are available for trading with one month, two months, and three months expiry. So, a uh, new contract is introduced on the next day of the following expiry of the new month contract. So, the participants, uh, SEBI is a regulator and trading members, clearing members. Uh, these uh, trading members and clearing members, the concept of legislation explanation will be done in link to it. Uh, and NSE market, we say that is futures and options. It's like F and F and O means futures and options. Fully automated screen based trading, index features and options, stock features and options. These are the trading mechanisms of NSE. So, there are some innovative trading products that are traded across the globe, like interest rate features, weather derivatives, volume features, volume options, credit derivatives, binary credit derivatives. These are the uh, innovative products. Uh, so, these products are uh, some of these products are not. Uh, not possible, I mean, not happening in the Indian exchanges, but uh, will soon this kind of weather derivatives and credit rate derivatives will be, will be will be in operation in Indian exchanges also. Now it has been permitted in the US and developed and developed country stock exchanges. It will be come soon. So we hope that this kind of weather derivatives and credit derivatives will be coming in Indian exchanges too. So uh, with this, uh, I can change the slide to uh, conceptualization. So now we can go ahead with the conceptualization of derivatives. These conceptualizations are very important to understand the concept of uh, understand the things of derivatives. Otherwise, the people won't understand uh, the practical part of derivatives. Uh, so we can start from the slide. So two parties, Mr. A and uh, Mr. B, uh, 
Mr. A, uh, you know, Mr. A having Mr. A is having bullish sentiments, and Mr. B is having bearish sentiments. Uh, and uh, Mr. A said to Mr. B, I agree to buy 500 shares of X Limited at rupees 560 each after three months. And Mr. B said, I agree to sell 500 shares of X Limited at 560 after three months. So Mr. A said. I agree to buy 500 shares of X Limited at rupees 560 each per share 560 after three months. And Mr. B said he sell. Mr. B said he sell, and Mr. A said I can buy from you. So Mr. A is having bullish sentiments, and Mr. B is having bearish sentiments. So bullish and bearish sentiments. Uh, bullish sentiments means Mr. A expecting a price rise in future. And Mr. B is expecting a price reduction in future. That is a bearish sentiment and bullish sentiment. And uh, so, so uh, after that, uh, that statements, Mr. A uh, bullish sentiments. He said, "Let us make a speculative deal. Let us sign a contract." And Mr. B, we shall square up the price difference in cash. So you no need to exchange the shares and all like uh, physical transaction. Just what is the difference in the stock price? I mean. What is a profit they can square up? That way, uh, A and B agreed. Uh, Mr. A, you know, Mr. A shares quoted at 560. You now, after three months, the price will rise. That way, Mr. A sentiments moves on. And Mr. B, bearish sentiments, no chance. After three months, the price will fall. That way, Mr. B said. And. Uh, the default uh, they should be avoided so that an intermediary should be taken into place intermediary said wait i'm an intermediary here the intermediary is the stock exchange so the stock exchange act as intermediary in this type of contract this contract is called futures contract and mr a and mr b are parties mr nj is an intermediary is a stock exchange we can say that it's a national stock exchange and Mr. Uh, see, Mr. NJ said, both of you deposit with me rupees 20,000 each. So, both the parties required to deposit 20,000 each as a margin for safety. Otherwise, if one of the party violate the contract, we cannot uh, claim back the amount. So, for safety purpose, both of you deposit with me rupees 20,000 each. So, this this contract is called derivative. After three months, the price of shares X Limited turned to be 550. See, after three months, the price of X Limited turns to be 550. So, Mr. A said, Mr. A, what he said? Mr. A said, I agree to buy 500 shares of X Limited at 560. So the shares right now is 550. Mr. A should buy from B rupees 560. So in the market the shares are priced at 550, but A should buy these 500 shares from Mr. B rupees 560. That means Mr. A should lose 10 rupees per share. That means 500 shares 10 rupees means 5000 rupees. So. That's the loss. Mr. A loses 5000, that means 500 into 10. Current market price is 550 and the contract price is future contract price is 560. So 500 into 500 shares. So 5000 rupees Mr. A loses and Mr. B gains. So Mr. B said, Come on, clarify your due simply by 5000. And Mr. A's balance remaining the Premium here, the margin deposited with the stock exchange and 20,000 minus 5,000, 5,000 should be go to Mr. B. Mr. B's balance 20,000 plus 5,000 is 25,000 rupees. You understand? So 20,000 minus 5,000, 15,000 is the current margin, mar, uh, current margin position of Mr. A and Mr. B's margin position is 25,000, is 5,000 is a profit from the contract. So now there is another concept is long positions and short position futures. Long position means the buying and the short position means the selling. Simply we can say that the long means buy and short means to sell. So we can explain in detail 
long position position that indicates buy now with the intention to sell later at higher price buying now with the intention to sell later at higher price short position means position that indicates selling now with the intention to buy later at lower price so long position means buy now with the intention to sell later at higher price short position means selling now with the intention to buy later at lower price so both are different long position means buying now with the intention to sell later at high price short position means selling now with the end. this is a short position means like a bearish sentiment long position is like a bullish bullish sentiment but in long position we can we can do in cash market buy now and sell later in short position sell now and buy later that is quite different so we need to understand the concept of clarity on that so looking forward so long position uh, the long position is buying here we can entry and the prices moves up moves up this is a target and we need to sell it and short position we need to enter in a we need to sell this point selling of shares selling of derivatives in this point selling of shares in this point and then we need to buy it back from this point okay so this uh, sell at the higher price and buy at a lower price here so make a profit and here buy at a low price and sell at a higher price make a profit okay so short selling is uh, involved selling the stock which you don't own and buying it back later to square the position so we don't own the shares then look how we can sell the shares with an ordering it it's possible a short seller resort this type strategy because he expect prices to fall and wants to benefit from the fall in the falling market this is a good way to make the money So short selling of a selling a stock that is not owned when the stock price is at high in the market is expected to decline in the future is bearish sentiments and is expecting a price fall in the future one can make gains by short selling this is done by borrowing the stock from someone who holds a stock borrowing the stock thereafter selling the borrowed stock and waiting for the prices to fall so once the stock price falls repurchase buy to cover the same stock at such lower price and return back return the borrowed stock to the stock lender along with the stock lending charges this is very simple just borrowing the stock from somebody and sell it and buy it back at a lower price and giving back the borrowed stock to the borrower and the same time uh, that time we need to pay some kind of stock lending charges also because we are borrowing the stock right so this is the concept of short selling it's borrowing the stock from somebody and selling it at a higher price and buy back at a lower price and given giving back the borrowed stock including the stock lending charges so example how uh, it is been done you so hold 100 shares of x limited currently priced at rupees 440 each a 3 months future contract is priced at rupees 450 to each with a lot size of 100 shares The margin to be deposited in future contract is four thousand. Explain how you can sell the shares at four fifty two after three months. So how uh, people can do short selling? With this question, we can click clarify. So hundred shares you are holding. The stock price right now is four hundred and forty, and three months futures contract is priced at four hundred and fifty two each with a lot size of hundred shares. Three months future contract. Future contract is priced at four hundred and fifty two. Each with a load size of hundred shares. So one load is hundred shares. In future contract, we need to do with a load size. So we we cannot do with one share, two share. One load, one load is here. One load is equal to hundred shares. The margin to be deposited in future contract is four thousand. The margin should be deposited. Uh, we have clarified the margin concept in the in the previous example. Uh, how explain how you can sell the shares at four fifty two after three. so uh, as you want to sell the shares in futures after 3 months you should enter into futures contract of 100 shares with a short position that means sell future future contract of 100 shares with a short position means sell futures and the price is uh, 452 you know that so deposit the margin 4000 and wait for 3 months so after 3 months reached it seems that after 3 months the price of the shares in the spot market is 430 so your contract Future contract price is sell four hundred and fifty-two. Okay, 
so sell future you have taken the sell future though the sub prices decrease that means you gain 22 22 per share but we need to sell back the shares in, in the spot market you are holding uh, 100 shares so you are selling 100 shares and current market price is 430 and uh, you will get 43000 okay but you will get a profit from futures contract and you have done with a sell future 452 and now share price is reduced to 430 this difference is 22 and one lot is 100 shares so 100 into 22 this 2200 all together your realization will be 45200 okay and what about the, in other scenario assume that 3 months the price of the shares in the spot market is 470 and you will uh, still in cash 452 on selling such shares but your future price is 452 but the shares reverse app and the shares have prices have increased but you uh, here you suffered a loss in the futures contract but in in the cash market you will gain 100 shares 470 47000 you will get and loss in the futures contract the share price has increased 18 rupees Uh, your contract price is 452 and the current market price is 470 the price difference is 18 per share so the 18 into 100 1800 that all together you will get 45200 so uh, now you understand the different uh, scenarios uh, when you enter the futures contract the prices uh, rise uh, and when you enter the futures contract the prices fall and so in when the when you enter the future sell future contract short position the price is increase you will suffer a losses and when you enter the futures contract uh, sell future contract and the price is decrease you can earn a profit so uh, uh, this is a this is the concept of uh, future uh, contract so with this slide uh, uh, with this slide uh, i can Uh, end the first session and the remaining section continue uh, with the next video thank you